very top, but that next to the top, they're the ones that are freaked out and want to do something. They got into this to really defend the country. I mean, somebody like you could have made, you know, $10 million a year with your science and mathematics, but you would, you know, take a pay cut and work at the NSA. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a paradox that government's got so many problems, but then the corporations are just as bad. And then we tend to just either see it as good or bad. You know, are you for the government or against the government? It, it, it's more sophisticated than that. Yeah, it's not a it's not uh, black or white for sure. I mean, it's a matter of uh, of you know whether or not you 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 agree with the underlying principles of why we formed this nation and got rid of George the Third, or or you don't. And uh, and and the point is, more and more people over time, I guess, we're becoming so so comfortable in in our uh, living standard that we're losing what it took to get here. You know, we're we're failing to realize that that. In order to have all these freedoms, we had to work very hard and sacrifice a lot to get here. And, and that's what, uh, you know, <clears throat> people who fought World War II have told uh, Tom Drake when he did interviews with them. He, they were saying things like, what did we fight for? You know, take given the current circumstance of where we're headed. I mean, we're not uh, we didn't fight for an omnipresent, uh, you know, government uh, monitoring everything the country, the people in the country are doing. That's not that's not freedom. And uh, they were asking him and those questions, even when he was doing interviews for the for the National Archives as a part of his uh, uh, court uh, settlement. Amazing. So, I mean, it's really I mean, uh, that's really uh, that, that's really a, a disturbing statement from from veterans of World War Two. Well, my grandfather, he was deeply concerned. Because living here in Texas, they brought a lot of the rat line Nazis to Texas and New Mexico. And in the areas where he worked, he would, had to run into them all the time. And he was always pretty calm when I was a little kid, staying there for a week or so in the summer. But he would rant about all the damn Nazis. And he had a lot of friends, obviously, killed in World War II. And, and, and all the positions in government they were in. And that he was concerned that we were going to go that way. And, you know, my mom would say, oh, you're... You know, my dad's eccentric. My da And my dad would say, no, no, he's smart. But, you know, I just... I don't know what he would think saying this today, William Benny. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. My dog's getting a little upset here. I understand. You want to let the dog out, sir, and then we can. Uh... No, no, no. I'm fine. He's he's okay. He just uh, <clears throat> wanted to be petted. That's all. What kind of dog is he? German Shepherd. He's a pretty big boy. He's about 125, 30 pounds, something like that. He's a big boy. Well, I'm glad he survived the SWAT team raid. Yeah. Well, he wasn't here at the time. That was good, you know. Otherwise, you don't know what they would have done. When you looked at the federal SWAT team that came in on you, I know they probably had their faces covered. Were they proud of themselves while they were throwing your house to, you know, around and grabbing on you out of the shower? I mean, were they proud uh, of their No, work? I think uh, they were a bit... Uh, 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 it seemed to me that uh, most of them seemed a bit uh, uh, disturbed as to why they were there. That's good. That's what I've been finding. Yeah, that's uh, and that's basically most of them. The only one who wasn't there, uh, who wasn't disturbed, was the guy who signed the warrant, the senior um, uh, special agent Paul Marek. He 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 was already cleared into the program, and he knew why he was there. He was there to get us. Uh, to get, to get basically um, keep the cover up going on the programs that they were running that we knew about and that we were complaining to Congress about, so he knew that, and the rest of them didn't. So, yeah, so how dare you surprised. go to Congress as you're supposed to by law when the law is being broken and secretly testify? How how horrible! Yeah. Let's send a, I mean, and, and imagine that guy getting promotions because he would engage in things like this. What a dishonorable person! Yes, uh, that's. You know, uh, that's hard for me to imagine people like that looking themselves in the mirror when they're shaving in the morning. I want to go to some phone calls. I'm not going to play the clip because of time, but um, Apple's Tim Cook, their CEO, has come out on 60 Minutes and said they don't want to go along with these different bills, that it's an invasion of privacy. Uh, you notice, I don't want to glorify Steve Jobs, but he held off on letting him in to the Apple encryption. And one week after he died, uh, Apple gave up the codes. Do you think that's lip service by Apple for customers, or do you think it's real? Well, I think for Steve Jobs, it was probably real for sure. But uh, for the rest of them, I think see, the problem is they also they also get paid for all this information and this access. So it adds to their bottom line with no additional effort, basically, on their part.
Oh, that's another question. Why put up NSA and FBI stingrays, tens of thousands of them, stealing all the cell phone data when it already runs through all the hubs and they can just have it sorted there and then bulk batch it? Is because they don't want a record that it was grabbed off the hubs? Well, what is the point of that? Uh, well, that's part of it. The other part is that it adds to a, a greater program that they're putting together, uh, which is called Treasure Map. That's the one where they're going to be monitoring where you are uh, every minute of the day. So it's a physical tracker. Yeah. It's a, it's a contributor to that. It's another aspect of it that they may pick up missing information that they didn't get from other sources, you know. Sure. I have, uh, interlapping fields of fire. In fact, that's what I was told by some insiders that are pretty high up, is that they also might want to bring in an Internet kill switch during a civil emergency or martial law, and they're putting in an alternate government Internet right now. Uh, I think they've pretty much already had that all along. Yes. But they're going operational to command and control the local police. Yeah. That's other, another disturbing part, yeah. Good God, you can just, just take over. Hillary said, I want it to be a Manhattan project to protect us from terrorists and the Internet. I've always called it a giant secret Manhattan project takeover. And, and now she's calling it that, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I think that's fundamentally what it is. We're becoming a, a very uh, effective uh, police state, much more than any other totalitarian state or system has ever developed. Absolutely. Let's talk to um, Brandon in FEMA Region 3. Got about a minute and a half to break. Go over with your question, Brandon, for William Benny. Hey, I wanted to get Mr. Benny's opinion on the FBI, NSA, and even the CIA coming out and saying that they're tapping people's phones without warrant and that it's to protect us. But if, but I actually know a cop who did it and had a warrant, and he was later indicted and thrown under the bus for it. But if the, fed, if the feds do it, it's perfectly okay. Can you maybe get into that and break down? Yeah, what about the hypocrisy of a parallel construction and the rest of it? But if a, if a local gets caught doing it, it's federal or state prison time. Well, you know, it's it's the it's the arrogance of the intelligence. I mean, NSA, CIA, FBI are really at the core of this, just like they were at the core of the uh, the the uh, uh, material that was used to indict uh, to uh, impeach and indict uh, Richard Nixon. These are the these are the main players in the central uh, um, collection and acquisition and use of ma material like uh, all the emails, phone calls, financial transactions, and so on that are being collected primarily by NSA. They're becoming basically the central repository and processor for all this information. So, But they've all been in it together from the beginning. Um, that goes back even to um, shortly after World War II when CIA and FBI or NSA were created. Thank you, Brandon. So, William Benny, stay there, sir. Come back and finish that comment. We'll take more calls. The website's exposedfacts.org. Folks, don't take an interview like this for granted. Spread this to everybody you know. Folks, we know all the stuff that's happening is illegal. We know it's been used everywhere else to oppress people. There is a global race for surveillance by all these different countries and companies. They've broken all the rules. They've set up an economy based on gaming things, based on manipulation now, the stock markets, the interest rates. It's all fake. And it's ended the free market. It's ending capitalism. And then they're blaming capitalism for the standard of living beginning to slide. No, this is like a rigged casino. Casino's not capitalist. It's a, it's a con game. And the elites have no bottom now, it seems. They'll do anything. Because after all, Karl Rove said they control reality. Hitler and Napoleon thought that too. William Benny, former NSA technical director, is our guest. We're taking phone calls for him right now. Let's go ahead and talk to Jeremy in Kansas. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Mr. Benny got cut off by the break. What was the point you were making, sir? Well, it was just that uh, they, they, they're so arrogant now about even violating all the fundamental principles of our country that they, they think they can get away with anything. So, I mean, uh, they, they don't seem to be afraid of anything when, in fact, I think that's when we need to start standing up and making it clear that we're going to come after them for what they're doing. That's right. They want to normalize all their activities. Jeremy in Kansas, go ahead. Yes, amen to the theme of today's show, which is about moral courage, even or especially when it's scary and unpopular. So I want to ask a question about the, our necessary political strategy to restore and rejuvenate our, our inherent natural rights, 
by asserting that, that the precursor to moral courage is intellectual courage or epistemological courage, and that the way that we're going to overcome the, the falsified left-right paradigm and overcome the perception managers is by going to the heart of what is actually being used against us, which is terrorism, state-sponsored terrorism. And, to, to, you know, we see the manifestation of this after September 11th rolling out in Paris. And sure, let me get William Benny's take on that so we can get to other callers, but it's, but it's a good point. They're opening the borders. They're letting terrorists in bare minimum. They are stand-downs on 9-11. They are not letting the NSA do its job against real terrorists. It's constitutionally protected. I mean, it's so obvious they're letting the terrorism take place to take our rights. How do we shatter that paradigm? It seems like we are, as it comes out, that the government's running ISIS. Well, yeah, I think that uh, exposure is uh, certainly the key. I think that's the sunlight part of it. Uh, but that, that caller is absolutely right. I mean, what they're doing is they're using, first of all, they say they have to do bulk acquisition and it buries their analysts. They can't figure anything out. They can't focus. So that that means that more terrorist attack occurs. And every time one does, they, they go into their data and they find out, oh, yeah, we knew about these fellows, but they didn't do anything before to stop it, you see. So that they use now that terrorist attack to at lobby for more money, more control, more information, more knowledge, for example. Uh, I would point to the French and their example, uh, their experience, too. I mean, uh, the previous earlier this year, the, uh, the attack in Paris, uh, that, that uh, sponsored you know, the acquisition of more money, more, more knowledge, more information, more, more analysts and so on for the French. But it didn't do them any good, even though they had this bulk acquisition system there again. Because, again, their people could not focus. And then another Paris attack occurs, you know. And so now, they, they're, now they're starting to do this time. It looks like they've changed their, their uh, approach. And they're focusing on what they know about people and using that. And that's a focused, uh, disciplined attack. They're on, profiling. Yeah, they're doing basically the, 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 they, they're looking at the, the behavior, which is a profile, right, of people who do bad things, and they've got all that information already. It's just that they aren't acting on it until Absolutely. after Absolutely. The Stay there. Yeah. When we come back for a final segment, sir, we're honored for your time. I want to take it to the next level, though. The good people in government can't do anything because of the fog of all the data, but the bad ones behind the scenes, they sent the feds down to stop the FBI from stopping the San Bernardino shooters two years ago. So there's even more there. They're actually protecting them at one level. It's even worse. Stay with us. Mr. Benny, I want to take a call or two. In, in closing, have you had any other points? But knowing history like you do, being able to run so many major operations successfully, you know, shutting down terrorists, you name it, defeating the Soviets, which you, I know, are a big part of. You don't toot your horn about that. But, but watching all these little men and women play, play warrior when they are just egomaniacs I really fear for the future of the planet with people like this running things. And, and I don't know how the other elites, who I know are, aren't perfect, but I don't know why they'd want to let something so dangerous uh, get into place. Yeah, I, I, I certainly agree with that. I mean, uh, I was on uh, <clears throat> Reddit when I was in Copenhagen, and uh, one of the questions they'd asked me was, what is the greatest threat to the people of, of the public uh, in the United States? And I said, well, it's the U.S. government. And the reason I said that is that, you know, any number of things that have happened, we've gotten into wars that are not justified and, and people die. We have maimed, you know, um, the part that gets me is that the, the veterans who are forced to go over and, and milit in the military and, and go over and fight these wars and either die or come back maimed and so on are now mistreated when they get back here. And that's really that's really criminal. And uh, it's like they. The arrogance of those in the, in, the, in the positions of power, throwing them out there, they don't pay for any of this. They don't have any consequences. It's all the people who are uh, ordered to do things by them. They're the ones who suffer. And that's, and that's, that's the part about, the, you know, democracy is supposed to, that's why uh, our founders, I think, set it up the way they did to, to try to have knowledge about the, uh, the government and what it was doing on our behalf and uh, with some reasonable sense of truth which is not, we've not been getting truth here. From well, there was goodwill out of our fair bearers. They wanted a new renaissance. They believed yeah. in humanity. They were fans of humanity. And the people we have running things are just fans of fraud and gangs. And um, the good news is history shows, as you know, sir, that when you sow the wind, you reap the whirlwind. 
And I know a lot of globalists want to cause a civil war in America, a soft civil war where they can go after all the patriots.